I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Uh, can you hear me now? No. Let me just make sure my volume's up. Yeah, mine's okay. Hello? There you go. Now I can hear you. Oh, Hi. Okay. Hi. Um, I just have a few questions. Sure. Regarding the lab. Okay. Uh, just a second. Let me open this. Okay. Yeah. Hello? Yep. Hi. Um, I, I just want to ask, so in the lab... Which lab are you talking about? Uh, exploring fossils. Okay. So, um, so there are some questions which says, like, um, like, look at the rocks surrounding the fossils what do you know what do you notice about these rocks in terms of color their size yeah. of sand grains and i'm not able to like how how should i answer that because like i'm not able to because i i got the i got i got the answers for the fossils because they have like distinctive features and like sure okay but in terms of rock i'm a bit confused just describe what you see literally like you need to go to the virtual field experience yeah, site zoom in and then you know what's the color look like to you um what is the texture do you see any layers do you see what look like sand grains do you see small pieces of rock like or does it look dark and muddy and you know is it are there big grains or small grains you know things like that it's really just descriptive oh, okay because all of them like mostly like, except a few look the same to me <laughs> okay so what so simply start with the rock you know has this color the rock has this tech ice this texture i see these things inside the rock it okay. it does whatever it is that you can see like you see the fossils are in just one layer in the rock or something oh. like that okay um, but elsewhere like there's it doesn't appear to have fossils above or below um something like that okay i i i got that okay and um and i i just want to ask like what about the size of the fossils i i quite i didn't get that too because like i couldn't find the size anywhere ah so in every image there should be a scale of some kind and that means not necessarily a bar scale sometimes people use a coin or a camera lens or a hammer and yeah. to give you a rough estimate of the size of the fossils. So oh, okay. they are just a few centimeters, maybe, you know, maybe they're five centimeters or fist sized. You can um, be as quantitative as possible, but, um, you know, you could also just be comparative. You could say it's smaller than a fist. It's the same size as the coins or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. Because uh, I thought that we have to like write the exact measurements and I no, was... don't worry about that. No, I mean, it, like I said, approximate. So look for the scale in those photos. Okay, I mean, some of them don't really like, for example, 
in like um in the uh in the snail snail in, in the siphonalia zone uh-huh. like there is a scale but like but it's but the but the but the fossil is like vertical not horizontal so i was confused if, if okay so you true. just have to kind of estimate then okay is, okay do you, is that what you mean it's just rotated and so you can't it's hard yeah, to measure. I can share my screen if you want. Yeah, sure. Let me fix the setting. Okay, go ahead. Good idea. I didn't think about that. You know what? I need to get a sweater. It looks like you're in a hot place. I am not. <laughs> yeah. The fog rolled in here and it's cold. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you can describe you know, how long and how wide they are. So that one, um, it looks to be three centimeters wide, four centimeters, four centimeters wide. Yeah, that's what I thought. I would like, just like do that. Yeah, totally. That's all, that's all. You And there's no, ex like, I'm not gonna ding you if you're off by a centimeter. There's like some error there, it's okay. Okay. And, um... Um, in, in this question, oh wait, where did that go? Uh, um, not, not this, what, oh, there you go. What do we have to do here? Like, I didn't get this. Ah, okay, so um, do you see, uh, so the diagram above is talking, um, the one with that shows the seashells and the living animals in different environments. It's suggesting, yeah. were you in class yesterday? Oh, uh, I was not. I have like a 12.5 hour difference, so. Oh, you're in India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's why you're hot. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've done a lot of field work in India. That's how I know the 12.5 hour difference. <laughs> um, so, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'll try to be, but. No, no, I, it's okay. You, you, you don't have to be. I just asked because I explained some in class and I didn't want to repeat myself, but I'll tell you what I said in class. Thank you. And I didn't get the lecture posted until really late last night. So it, yeah, I don't, I don't expect you to have seen it. Um, so what I said about the upper diagram is that it's showing you basically the environments, a relative environment for these different animals. So like the crab and the sand dollar, they're living basically along the shoreline. They're very close to the shore. The, yeah. the mussels and the, are those barnacles are living in shallow sea. Yeah. Yeah. The gastropods, the snails, the scallops are in deeper water. Yeah, um, see. Yeah, so something like that. And um, then this diagram here showing this inland sea. So <laughs> this is, you know, this is called paleogeography. This is what the land used to look like that yeah. we imagine. It's a cartoon, of course, but um, on the left hand side, that's what this inland sea looked like four million years ago. So there was, the sea level was higher, the mountains hadn't risen up quite so high then. So the, this low part of the land was inundated with water. And um, the, the Kettleman Hills are basically this environment where this inland sea is. And you're over time, so between 4 million and 1 million years ago, the, the sea drained or the sea level dropped and yeah. you're seeing the water is g gradually getting shallower and shallower. So you should okay. see a change in the fossil assemblage um, because the water is becoming shallower and shallower. So you should uh, see deeper animals in the older layers, deeper water animals in the older layers and some 
more shallow water animals or near shore animals in the in one million years ago so the shore animals are more like deeper now whereas so they they would have been under there there was deeper water four million years ago at the site of kettleman hills and that changed it became shallower and shallower as that sea drained yeah through one million years ago so basically imagine this water level getting lower and lower so so all yeah. of the like the sand animals, would be ahead. on the land now well th they move right they're gonna they're gonna start to shift but basically um you're gonna start seeing fossil remnants of the deeper water exposed as you as you go down through the rocks because as you go down through the rocks you're looking at older and older rocks so okay. they should contain something more like the four million year ago geography and so hence deeper water animals okay does that make sense yeah it does so hopefully was... as you went through through the lab you saw a progression um you saw a change maybe or if you didn't maybe go back and look to see if there's a the description changes from in the way that they describe the environments for these animals look at that and see what you wrote or what was in the captions okay so okay uh so what about like the close modern day relatives like how how would like what would be like because like cl clams and um like clams and scallops exist even now yeah so so I are think all of those animals all exist right now so their modern mm -hmm. relatives live in similar environments so when in we the similar environment right yeah yeah similar environment so if we see scallops in deeper water i, I think they live in a range but i think maybe they go deeper um you know i you find gastropods you find snails at the beach you find yeah sand dollars at the beach so you know that they're relatively shallow water but some of those animals like to live in deeper water environments too um so that's that's what it's talking about okay okay got it and one last question i have what's um i didn't get this where did it go um yeah so what's a in this i didn't get it oh i think i gotta zoom in there um is there are there letters next to those i see yeah. some oh those look like barnacles yeah i i quite didn't get that like what are barnacles um you see okay so barnacles they often attach to ships to boats they attach yeah. to other animals often. They attach to rocks. And in fact, one picture you had, scroll through the other ones, and you had some barnacles on another shell in one of those images. It was on, it was on, a, it was on a clamp or something. A clamp. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if it's on a clam, you can infer that the barnacle lives in similar environments to the clam. Okay, so in this one, do we have to like identify what what I didn't get the question. Do we have to identify which Can I read the question again, please. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Photographs shows common fossils. Thank you. I'll just read it for a second. Okay, so it's asking you simply to describe some of these animals it looks i mean um ornamentation so where the ridges are on the animal what size shape are they so really just descriptive like that and then um compare it to the siphonalia zone so literally okay. go back and look at the siphonalia zone what did those look like and are they bigger smaller are they 
more ornamented or less? Are they rounder or yeah, something like that? Okay, am I right? Is like B a Macoma clam? Because I wasn't sure. It looks like a clam. Yes. Um, it and says. Uh, it sure does. It is. See, okay. Oh, here's another thing. The symmetry is, is another aspect of describing seashells. So notice that B and so the clam and E, the sand dollar, are pretty symmetrical compared to C and D. Do you yeah. See how they, they're not mere images, both sides are not mere images on C and D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another good thing to point out. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, you did. You said symmetrical ridges. Okay. Fan shaped. But you could add something about the asymmetry and C and D. Okay. Okay. The ridges. Okay. I, I get that. But use that when you're trying to identify like what it is, use the symmetry as one of those characteristics. Because otherwise, okay. B and C, they both kind of look like clams. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think C is like thicker and like yeah. than B. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I that's what I wanted to ask overall. Okay. Good. You you think you get it now? Yeah. Thank okay, you. Good. You're welcome. And I'll try to be in the lab next no, time. Hey, don't worry about it. If you need to be asleep during class time, I get it. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. all right. No, I'm, I'm trying to record. I've had some trouble with, with some failed recordings, but it should be no problem from now on. There will always be a recording of class. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and I hope to keep these Friday sessions up. So if you're awake late at night, we can always chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's why I come here sometimes. <laughs> okay, okay you. see you. Bye.